part two of day seven. I wrapped up my whitefish limit this morning, got them cleaned up and in the freezer. So this afternoon I'm headed out to do a hike in for some brook trout. Following the moose. Someone's not very happy that I'm at a fishing spot. So tonight I am brook trout fishing. I hiked into a little lake that has brook trout in it and I am only got about an hour and a half before dark but that seems to be the only time where they bite anyways. Only problem is tonight when I got here I usually fish by this old beaver dam that's never been used. Well tonight I discovered it's being used. And this guy has been slapping and carrying on and scaring all the fish, so I don't know how this is going to go, but... Oh. Tough slogging. Gotta watch for the beaver runways. They have all these little paths that are a little deep, deeper. And they can be quite deep, like right here. That's so bad. Stash my stuff. Got some convenient firewood. We're going to start with the spinner, see if there's some active fish roaming around. And I always like to put a little meat on my spinner. Just like half a dewy hanging off the back. And I kind of stick one on every treble. And then have one dangling. Sometimes they cruise right along the shoreline, like that's where most of the minnows and stuff are, right along the edge. So. There's one. Oh, how did he miss that? He hammered it. I like to put a little stutter into it every once in a while just to maybe trigger a follower. A lot of times these trout will just follow it and follow it. Sometimes I'm just doing something a little different. Is enough to make them eat it. Another shoreline crash. There's one. Oh. There he is. Oh! What's with me losing all these fish all the time? So since I'm a fisherman and I need an excuse for all these fish I'm losing or they're missing and short strikes, I'm going to blame it on the size of the fish, they're small, and the size of my spinner is too big. It's a number three, which is pretty big for these little guys. I think they're just having trouble eating it. 
they're attacking it and aggressively enough, but they're just not getting hooked. So, so that's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it until I catch a big one. And then I'm going to tell you I used a big spinner because I wanted to catch a big one. This is a great evening. You couldn't ask for better weather for this time of year. Keep a couple. But I'm not going to be a pig about it. see a fish rise I'll cast past it a little bit and then start cranking it in once I get to where he's oh oh come on it's that big spinner I'm telling you there's another one nice That's awesome. That one looks a little smaller. No, oh, he's good. I think I'm going to take three tonight. That's, that'll do it for me. There's a lot of fish in this lake, and I don't feel bad about keeping a couple because I do it once a year basically. So. I'm not hurting the population. All right, back at it. I think I'll be good with two. That's enough for a meal tonight in camp. And uh, I'll let the rest go. Here's the beaver's house. Makes a great place to catch trout, that's for sure, with all those sticks underneath the water. It must be in it, because I don't see him going around anymore. So, a little tip when you're using a worm on your spinner. Especially when you have to whip it pretty far. I like to put it on all three trebles. Go around it, maybe four times. So now it's on there a bunch of times which makes it harder for the fish to rip off. But when you do big, long casts, it stays on a little better. Also, when I, when I have a worm on a spinner like that, I like to... Uh, I don't like to leave too much dangling behind. I've seen guys leave three or four inches hanging behind the spinner and they're just asking for short strikes and they rip off the worm. So I try and keep it like an inch, inch and a half maybe, not too long. Probably even be shorter with these little guys. Come on.
There he is. Got him. I got him. That one gets to go free. So pretty. One of my favorite fish for sure. There we go. Nice. Really hoping to catch one that I measure in pounds, not in inches. Oh, come on. Oh, little guy. Anyways, like I was saying before I was interrupted by that little guy, I would really like to catch one measured in pounds, not in inches. Although I like the smaller ones to eat, I would let the big one go, but I just like to catch them. I have one so swirl right in front of me, so again, I'm going to cast about uh, six or so feet past it. Get it right where he was. And that did not work. Try this side. There he is. I got him. I think that one's a little better. Thing. You don't want to put the death grip on these things either, like, you know, a handling. A net would have been really smart. I just didn't have one with me. So, yeah, just handle them firm but gently. Try not to uh, squeeze them. Yeah. Nice. Two more casts, I'm going back to the other side of the dam. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's fish jumping and taking stuff all over the place. I should have brought my fly rod. But they're all kind of out in the middle. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> right out of the water. There we go. There he is. Little guy. Well, super fun evening. It's getting dark, so I better get out of here so I have some light. But I managed to land five. I probably lost that many too and had lots striking at the bait. I got to see lots attacking it right close to shore at my feet, basically. So pretty fun night. Um, Beeb wants to come home. He's still over there swimming back and forth and back and forth waiting to get back. So I'm going to leave him alone and get out of here. But yeah, great night. Really glad I made the hike. And uh, I got a couple fish to... Oh, lighting's bad. I got a couple of fish to take home. I'm going to have a little fish fry tonight, but 
and I don't feel bad about keeping a couple now and then. There's lots of fish here, and uh, I don't overdo it, and I only do it like a couple times a year. This lake I do once a year, I fish it, so I'm going to have a couple for a fish fry tonight, and there's not much better than fresh brook trout. So, Anyways, I'll show you that later maybe, and uh, better get out of here. Last cast. That one felt like another. So I'm not gonna lie, this whole walking through the bush thing for a couple kilometers in the dark by yourself in bear country with a couple fish in your hand kind of gives you the heebies. So thanks for joining me on my trip. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're just catching up now, be sure to go back to day number one and follow along. I caught Chinook salmon, pink salmon, rainbow trout, pike, whitefish, walleyes, and brook trout. So I really had a great trip, really enjoyed it. So I hope you'll go back and follow along and I hope you'll subscribe for my future adventures.